Yes, Sister Ellen, I love it too. So listen, TGIF, everybody. God is so good. God is, how many of you know that God is faithful? Anybody can attest to the faithfulness of God this morning? I'm just here to tell you, he truly is the way maker in every single way, in every aspect, in every part of my life, that he makes a way out of no way. Hey, Sister Angela, good morning, beloved. It's so good to see you. He makes a way out of no way. He knows how to change hearts. So we need to let him uh, let him do the work. Get out of his lane. Stay in our lane. Do our part so that he can do his part. Amen. And I just, I'm just, and listen, somebody said we made it. We absolutely made it. I don't know what uh, fiery darts came your way this week. I don't know what type of news you may have received. I don't know what may have discouraged you this week. But can I just tell you something? You made it. Somebody just need to just say, thank you, God. I made it. I made it. I made it. Despite this, you know, despite whatever, I made it. I'm here. I'm still standing. Yeah, my faith man took a little uppercut this week, but I'm still standing. I'm still believing. I'm still trusting. Yeah, my finances may not look the way I wish they would look, but God, I'm still here. I'm still standing. I made it. I made it because you made it possible for me to make it. Come on. Is that anybody's testimony this morning or am I just preaching to myself? So listen, we made it and we are here. We're here this morning wanting to hear from God, wanting to hear, you know, get into his word so his word can get into us so that he can speak to us. You know, that we may have some questions and God will give us the answer. That this will be a rhema word, not just something that I'm bringing forward, but something that God divinely poured into me so that I can turn around and pour it into you. Are y'all ready for the word this morning? First and foremost, thank you for being here. Thank you to those of you who already clicked share. If you haven't clicked share, would you do me a favor and do that now and just let others know that we're about to jump into the word. Let others know that there is hope. Let others know that God is still on the throne. He's still on the scene. He's still the way maker. He's still the promise keeper. Come on, somebody. So I'm going to go ahead and pray so we can jump into the word this morning. Um, I'm just excited about what God showed me. You know, his revelation is just beautiful. I have um, um, some dear sisters that we get together um, biweekly and... Um, you know, we, we had a study where the the individual who bought the word forward, um, she really dug. She really, you know, she really went into the word. She did her homework, y'all. And, and she inspired us because we realized in listening to how she was able to just bring that word and, and break it down that, that there are... There's revelation, there are gems, there are jewels that's hidden. And sometimes there's some things we're not going to get from God when we're just doing a little five-minute devotional. Come on, somebody. I'm not against five-minute devotional. Sometimes that's all that we may have the time to do. But I'm saying that when we take the time to really dig, that there are treasures, hidden treasures, that we're only going to discover, we're only going to uncover, we're only going to find it when we take out our spiritual shovel and begin to dig deep. And when we go deep, deep calls onto deep. When we go deep, then God can give us some deep revelation. God can really give us the answers we're seeking. God can really give us the strength that we're needing. God can give us the wisdom that we need. So, Father God, we just come to you right now, and we just thank you, God, for another day. We thank you for how you have kept us, God. You, we thank you, God, for how you've protected us, God. There are some things we know you protected us from, but there are so many other things we don't know. We don't know you protected us because you did just that. You are God, 
and your sovereign hand was over us. Your sovereign hand was over our loved ones. Your sovereign hand was over our home, over our vehicle, over our finances, God. And we just thank you, God, that even though we may sleep, you don't slumber, God, that you are awake 24-7, God, that even though we may be faithless at, at times, God, you continue to be faithful, Father God. We thank you that your love for us is not contingent upon our behavior and our actions and our attitudes, God, because sometimes the way sometimes the way that we are, we can be unlovable, God, but you love us despite it all. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace that is sufficient for everything we go through. We thank you for your mercy, God. For there are things that we do and that we say, and, and, and the, the, the cost, the repercussions should be monumental, God. But because of your mercy, God, we do not get what we do deserve. So we thank you, God, for just being that unconditional lover of our soul. <laughs> we thank you, God, for being our way maker, our provider, our healer, our comforter, God. And then thank you for being our guide as we look to you this morning to speak a word into our hearts today. Speak, Holy Spirit. We are listening. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hey, Melly, good morning to you. It's great to see you, Sister Veronica. Good morning to you. Oh, man, I am so excited. So let's go ahead and jump into this word, y'all. I'm so, God, I just, I love the word of God. I just do. And every time I study and I can look at the same scripture today, tomorrow, and on Sunday, and I can get different things each and every time <laughs> that I look at it. And that's what I just absolutely love about the word of God, that it is alive, it is living, it is powerful, it is right now. So today, 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 we are going to be in 1 Kings chapter 17, and I'm going to read verses 2 through 9. If somebody could put that in the chat for me, 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 2 through 9, and hear the word of God. It says, then the Lord said to Elijah, go to the east and hide by the Cherith brook at a place east of where it enters the Jordan River and drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you for I have commanded the ravens to feed you. Verse five, so Elijah did as the Lord told him and, and he camped beside the brook and the ravens brought him bread and meat each morning Y'all talk about um, room service, y'all. It says the raven bought him bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. But after a while, somebody say after a while, but after a while, after a while, the brook dried up. For there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. When the Lord said, then the Lord said to Elijah, go and live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Sidon. There is a widow there who will feed you. I have already given her my instructions. This morning, y'all, <laughs> I want to minister uh, from the title or the topic, if you will, knowing when it's time to move on. Time to move on. Somebody just say, God, help me to discern, help me to know when it's time to move on. Kenny Rogers, he wrote a song many, many years ago. And, and the, uh, the lyrics of the song, some of you already are probably familiar with this. He says, you got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. In other, in other words, Kenny Rogers is saying, listen, there, there's a time that 
you know, he's talking about when you're, you know, playing cards, you know, that you got to know when you got to, you got to hold it. And other times you got to know when you got to lay down and go, okay, I, I'm, I'm done. You know, um, sometimes you got to step away. Sometimes you got to put on your, your sneakers and you need to run and get as far. You, you got to know, you have to know when it's time to move on. And the challenge with us Christians today is sometimes, I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes we struggle, I struggle to really hear the voice of God. And in that struggle, right, I sometimes struggle to know when do I step out versus when do I stand still? Anybody know what I'm talking about? When to speak up versus when to keep my mouth shut, you know? Uh, and the overall challenge is to know when a season has come to an end. Know when it's time to move on. Especially, listen to this, when it's been a good season. Especially when it's been an all right season, right? It, it's, it's, it's almost easier to know when to step out or step away when it's not a good season. When folk ain't treating you right. <laughs> You're being taken advantage of. You're not being appreciated. You're being overlooked. Come on, somebody. Anybody know what I'm talking It's almost easier to step away when these things are happening. But can we discern when it's, that it's time to move on even when things are okay? After all, y'all, when we look at the scripture that we just read, um, Elijah was where God told him to be. Have you ever been where you know God, you know God told you to be here. You know he told you to be in this, in this city, in this state, at this job, at this church. Come on, somebody. So Elijah was where God told him to be. It wasn't like he was not. And that's why the brook dried up. No, he was where God told him to be. And 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 not only was he where God, he was where God told him to be, but there was evidence. Somebody say evidence. There was evidence that he was where he was supposed to be because God provided. Have you ever been in a situation where you knew you were where God told you to be because God provided? We always say God's uh, vision brings his provision, right? So we say, okay, God, you know, I believe this vision is from you, but 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 to know that it's from me, you're going to have to provide. And so, you know, I've been there where I have been where God has told me to be, and there is evidence that I am where I'm supposed to supposed to be because he is providing. So Elijah had ravens bringing food to him y'all he didn't even have to go find the ravens this is so this is what so listen he just he could just he just chilling and the ravens would bring the food to him right and he was chilling right by the brook so he can drink whenever he want and and all seemed well until one day the brook dried up and the ravens stopped coming all seemed well for some of us until the resources shifted. The door closed. Come on, I'm talking to somebody this morning. The relationship changed. <laughs> the hours no longer worked. The location was no longer good for what you needed. And then here comes the challenge for some of us. Is we got to know when situations that we are in are temporary because sometimes we have the propensity to to decorate our tent you know what i'm talking about because a tent is something that you pitch knowing that it this is not how it's going to be always some of us are in some situations and the reason 
that you are having a hard time embracing where you are is because you are looking at it as a permanent situation, but really it's temporary. And, and but because uh, it feels so hopeless to you, and, and you're not you're not sure or believing that God can do more, that He can do better, you just kind of settle. And so what you do is you begin to decorate your tent. I don't know. I don't know that I've ever seen tents with decorations because most people that pitch a tent understand that this is only temporary. Somebody said this is this is only temporary. Even though it's been okay, it's still temporary. Come on somebody. And so and so you know, so Elijah had to he had to be able to move even though he was being fed by ravens and he had all the water he needed, he had to be okay with getting up and moving when God said it's time to move. That tent is temporary. That situation is temporary. That hardship is temporary. Come on, I'm talking to somebody this morning. Sometimes we become settled in situations that were only meant to be, help me, Holy Ghost, just a stepping stone. It's from, it just was to get you from this place to that place. It, 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 it was only to be a learning experience. If we're talking uh, jobs, it was only meant to be a resume booster. This is not the final stop. It was only meant to be a knowledge expander. It, it was meant to be a healing opportunity, but this was not your final resting place. It is not your final destination. This is not the way it's going to always be. So what do you do when all signs point to this ain't it no more? <laughs> you know, I know you got comfortable. I, I know you convinced yourself, but, but this ain't it anymore, right? It, it was good for a season, but you got to be able to sense when you're about to enter into a new season. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 tells us to everything under the sun, under the heavens, there, there is a time, there is a season, right? And, and as Christians, we have to be able to discern the season. Know when, when it's time to step in. But you also need to know when it's time to step out. Come on, somebody. You, you know when it's time to stand up. But then you also need to know when it's time to go sit down somewhere. Am I talking to anybody? No one is time to push and then fight. But then no one is time to just relax because God's got it. He's fighting. He don't need you to fight. He's, he's got it. Right? No one to hold on. And, and, and no one to let go. Sometimes you got to let go. No one to remain and no one to move on. It's important. And sometimes, listen to this. That this is this is this is, you know, I don't know about you, but this is sometimes what trips me up. Because we're talking about going from good to great. And I always believe God is purposeful. You understand? He's gonna take us from good to great. But sometimes between good and great, what's in between? Help me, Holy Ghost. We're talking about Egypt and the promised land. And then we're talking about in the middle, the wilderness. Come on, any, anybody know what I'm talking about? That you know God's taking you to great, but the next step, somebody said the next step, the next step doesn't look like great. Sometimes moving on is tough because the next option, doesn't look as appealing as where you are now. <laughs> Elijah, leave this place where the ravens are feeding you. The water is endless. Leave this place and go to where I'm going to have a widow feed you next. I can see Elijah. I'll be like, yo, are you kidding me, God? You want me to move? This is how some of us are. God, are you serious? You want me to move from my house into an apartment? I mean, I'm used to living in a house. What am I going to do? I'm going from 2,000 square feet to 800. God, are you kidding me? God, you, you told me, you want me to go to this next position where I'm going to take a pay cut? 
Yo, God, you want me to get a used car instead of a new one? Come on, I'm just, I'm just wondering, is anybody, is anybody, is, is God talking to you this morning? God, you want me to apologize when I wasn't even wrong? <laughs> I mean, seriously, what happens when God is trying to get you to your best place? But the place you're about to step into feels like a downgrade. What happens when the next step feels like you're taking a step backwards? What, what happens if the, the, the next step messes with your ego? You know, kind of messes with your pride, messes with yourself, your sense of self-sufficiency, feels like a step backward after everything you have done, after all you have been through, after all the prayers that you have put up, after all you've done to get to where you are. The next place is for your healing, but it requires humility. And because you finally understand your worth and your value, you're concerned that your kindness and your forgiveness may be misconstrued, misunderstood. I just want to talk to you today about knowing when it's time to move on. And sometimes in your moving on, it may not look like what you want it to. It may not look like what you were expecting. It may not look like it's the result of everything you have worked toward. But can I tell you, God knows what he's doing. Somebody say, God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Because ultimately, Elijah, as, as much as he's a mighty prophet, what he had to learn is that he had to depend upon God. That even though he had great powers, God used him mightily. Don't He couldn't begin to depend upon those powers. Listen, you can't begin to depend upon your skills and your experience. Come on, somebody. I know you got your little education, your PhD, your ABC. Come on, but you can't begin to depend upon that. You can't begin to depend upon that paycheck. I know you work hard to get that role, that title, but you can't depend upon that. See, what you're doing may be good, but God is always trying to get us to great. Somebody said, God, get help to help me to get to great, right? And it's not going to be by our own power. It's not going to be about our experience. It ain't going to be about our skills. It's going to be about our obedience. It's going to be about our discernment into knowing when it's time to move on. But to do that, we have to, we, we got to trust God completely. You got to trust that God will provide for your every need. You may not see. Help me Holy Ghost. You may not see how it's even possible. But scripture tells us. With, with man it may seem impossible. But with God what? Nothing is impossible. And it's time to move on. It's been good. But I'm, I'm moving on to better. And I know the next step. In my eyes, even in other people's eyes, may not look like great. But God is not like a man that he would lie. God tells us he knows the plans that he has for us. Plans to prosper us and give us a future and a hope. God is not any, if God is leading you, if God is saying it's time to move on. And listen, moving on is not just a physical state. I'm here to tell somebody this morning. I understand for some of us, moving on is a physical thing. You got to move from here to there. But some of us, moving on is an emotional thing. You have pitched, you have started decorating your tent in your place of hurt and pain and God. God is trying to move you on to healing. And because you've gotten so used to being the victim and so you're so used to telling this same story to yourself and to others, you're having a hard time moving on. But God says it's time to move on. Some of you got to move on spiritually. You've been saved for I don't know how long, but you're still reading the word and doing stuff like if you want milk, you got to move from the milk to the meat. I'm talking to somebody this morning. It's time to move on. And I just let me just say this as I get ready to close. For some of us, moving on is hard because we we think about who we are connected to. Help me, Holy Ghost. Some of us feel responsible for certain people. And 
I got news for you. You cannot make anybody want more or better for themselves. Even when you see their potential, you know they can do more. You know they can be more. And some of you, you're afraid to move on because of who, who you feel like you, 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 you want to bring with you. But can I tell you something? God is faithful. If this person is meant to be a part of your destination, if they're meant to be a part of your purpose, um, God has a way of bringing things around. He has a way of causing people to catch up. He has a way. God has a way of restoring the, the time, the days, the months, the years that the locusts have eaten. So you, you don't need to feel responsible for that. Because one out of two things will happen. God will have a way. As you're doing your healing, you're moving on, you're doing what you need to be doing, God is dealing with them too. And he'll do one out of two things. He'll help them to catch up. And one day, hallelujah, we have a beautiful reunion. And now is the right timing, the better timing for this relationship to flourish. Or guess what? You find out, I really didn't need that relationship. I can flourish without it. <laughs> I really didn't need them the way I thought. I really can do this, me and God. But let me tell you something. When God says it's time to move on, it's time to move on. And I don't know about you, but I don't want God drying up my resources. I don't want God to have to close doors. I don't want him to have to do that kind of stuff to get my attention. To if, if, When he says it's time to move on, pray for God to just give you the face. Say, okay, God, I, I, I'm going to let go of this. I'm not quite sure what I'm grabbing on to, but I know I'm, I'm, I'm holding on to you. And if you say it's time to move on, as good as this was, even in my mind, it might have been great. Because in my mind, I may have limited you, God, in thinking this is all you got for me. But I realize you have so much more. So God, give me the strength that I need to let go of good so I can press toward great. It's time to move on. So I don't know who this message is for this morning. I don't know how the Holy Spirit ministered to you this morning. But I pray this is, if this is you, I speak and bind and rebuke that spirit of fear. I bind it right now. We cancel that. We are not to walk in fear. We are women and men of faith. We are daughters and sons of the Most High King. And if, he's, if God says, time to move on, then let's pack our stuff. Pack our physical stuff. Pack our emotional stuff. <laughs> pack our spiritual stuff. And let's get ready to move. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this word this morning. Thank you, God, for letting us know that when you give us direction, God, that you provide everything we need to include the courage, the boldness, the resources, God. And that, God, even though sometimes it may feel like we're taking one step back or two step backwards, God, I think about an arrow. That before an arrow could be shot forward, it has to be pulled back. Father God, shoot us forward. <laughs> Aim us toward our destiny. Aim us toward our purpose today, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pull us as far back as you need to go, because the further back you pull us, the harder we will shoot forward, God. So, Father God, do what only you can do today, God, as we just trust you. We rely upon you. We depend upon you, God, to do what only you can do in our lives. Forgive us for trying to hold on to things because of, of, of our comfort, and not wanting to be uncomfortable. Forgive us, Father God. And we thank you for showing us today that when it's time to move on, you're about to move us from good to great. And from great to even greater. <laughs> I bless every person under the sound of my voice today, God. Let this message go deep into our spirit, our hearts, and our souls, God. And moving on, Father God, speak to us clearly as to what that means to each of us today. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.